Hi there. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the intuition behind our sort of standard error of beta hat, which we've derived. So let's just remind ourselves of what we got before. We had that the variance of beta hat given xi was equal to the population variance divided by the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar all squared. But we spoke about the fact that we normally don't actually have the population variance. We don't normally have sigma squared. So we actually have to go ahead and estimate that. And so as a result of that, we don't actually have the exact variance of beta hat. We have the estimated variance of beta hat given xi, which we said was equal to well, sigma hat squared, which we derived in the last video for the bivariate case as being 1 over n minus 2 times the sum of i equals 1 to n of u hat i squared divided by the same thing on the denominator, which is the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar all squared. Okay, cool. So we've got this expression now for our uh, estimated variance of beta hat. And this is the um, formula which programs like use, programs like Stata, will use unless you tell them to do otherwise when they're calculating the standard error of beta hat. So let's think a little bit about the intuition behind this. So on the denominator here, this is essentially the variance in x. I mean, it's not quite because, I, in fact, I need to put a sort of 1 over n on the bottom there for it to be exactly the variance, but it sort of is a measure of how much x is varying. Um, we're saying if x varies more, then this denominator is going to be bigger, which is going to mean that the sort of estimated variance as a whole is going to fall. So what's the intuition behind that? Well, let's think about an example. So if I had some x and some y, and initially I don't have that much variance in x at all. So my, all of my x are sort of located around the same sort of spot. There's only a small sort of variety in x, a sort of range of x goes from about there to there. Well, Although the intuition isn't exactly right, you can think about there being a sort of number of different ways to draw sensible looking best lines of best fit here. Or, uh, or even though least squares will only draw one, the intuition is that when you haven't got much variance in X, you're that much less certain in drawing a line of best fit. You're that much less certain than if you had sort of ranges of values of X which were much greater. So if my sort of X were ranging instead of over that sort of small range that I indicated before, we're doing something like that, whereby the new sort of range in X was much bigger than the original range, then I'm that much more confident in drawing my line of best fit. And as a result, the estimated variance in beta hat is going to fall. Cool. So that's the, that's the intuition behind the denominator. What's the intuition behind the numerator? Well, I mean, these u hat, essentially, these are just the residuals. So what do residuals measure? Well, they measure how well your model is fitting the data. If your model is fitting the data really, really well, then your residuals are going to be really, really small. Your sort of errors are going to be quite small. So if your residuals are quite small, when you square them, that's similarly going to be quite small. And as a result, your estimated variance of beta hat is going to fall as well. So the intuition here is that if you have a model that is fitting the data really, really well, then because of that, you are that much more confident in your estimated, well, in your estimated sort of um, point estimate, which beta hat puts out, which means that your estimated variance of beta hat is that much smaller.